Yep, that's exactly what you think that is. That paramedic is making that patient into a human meat sock puppet in an ambulance doing 90 miles an hour down the road. And if you think that's even close to the most ridiculous thing that you're gonna see on today's review show, <laughs> you're not even close to right. She's having trouble breathing. Give me a bait hook, size five. All right, so some trouble breathing, respiratory problem. He's asking for a bait hook. So he's probably gonna do some sort of needle decompression or something like that for collapsed lung. What's it for? A little front line medicine. Our tongue is blocking the right way. So we're gonna put the hook through our tongue and lip. Wait, what? No, that is not front line medicine. That's like the Hills Have Eyes medicine or Texas Chainsaw Massacre medicine. You know, you know what you could do to get the tongue off the back of her throat? Put her in the recovery position. Real simple, put her on the left-hand side. Magic. No anesthetic, huh? Lo siento. Oh, he speaks Spanish. Lo siento. That's good. That means I'm sorry in Spanish. He should probably learn another phrase. Soy un idiota. <sighs> this dude's gonna be a hit in the emo community. He just performed the first tongue labre piercing ever. Talk to me. So I'll do a full two centimeters so far, but now we wait. What do you mean now we wait? Susan, the saw heats the metal as it cuts. When it gets too hot, we have to stop. Wait for it to cool down. Ah, you guys are 100% right. I mean, I wouldn't want that metal to get too hot when you're cutting it with that sawzall. I mean, I wish you had some kind of liquid stored in the middle of those trucks that you're driving that's used to cool down hot stuff. I don't make it home! Why wouldn't you make it home? Your friends are injured. Hold on. I'm glad to see that they use that anti-visual trauma strap properly. I mean, most people would have put it across the patient's forehead to secure it to the board, but not these people. They wanted to make sure to put it across that poor patient's eyes so they didn't have to see all the horrific things going on around them. That's great A work, guys. Great A. Somebody get those sparks! We can't afford an explosion. Stand by. Holy crap, that was incredible. Most fire departments across the United States need some kind of K-12 to open up the hoods, but not them. She came swinging in with the shiniest pick edit axe I've ever seen and ripped that hood open faster than I can open up my generic box of Lucky Charms. And right behind her comes the greatest partner on the face of the planet putting out that electrical sparky fire with his magical CO2 canister. We're out of time. No plan. We inflate the jack now. Susan's not free yet. We have to risk it. Susan's so close, she's stable, but Carla can't wait. Yeah, Kat, that's a great idea. You know, one thing I learned about during all my MCI drills was to test how quickly a patient can go from a red category to a deceased category by lifting them two feet off the ground with an impaled object still in them. Well, I hope you guys had a blast going through this LeBray Pearson MCI drilling fun. And if you didn't learn anything from this, just remember one thing. If you don't know what you're doing, just hit it with a pick at an axe until you figure it out.